Hello, Grown Up Storytime. My name is Chris Skelton, and this is the House of Blues gig by W.D. Hesser. I had a band with some friends like 10 years ago. I say I had a band because I imagine it's almost like having a child. You know, you spend a lot of quality time with someone, you combine all your traits together into something that you have to pick a name for, nurture, attempt to make financially stable, and ultimately let go of with memorabilia in a box in your closet and on your walls to show for it. I don't know, maybe someone else has drawn that comparison before, but I wouldn't know it. Our music was somewhere between rock and roll and heavy metal. It started out just me and the other guy, also named Billy, who I met at a party. He said he had a drum kit that was built by the drum tech for Yes or something, and another big orange plexiglass one. Well, that all sounded cool, since I had a bunch of big loud stuff too on account of working at Steamboat Amps at the time. I still have most of it in my dining room. It's too much power to take anywhere, yet too sentimental to ever get rid of. Well, we were digging the two-piece vibe for a while, and, I mean, who doesn't love a good two-piece? As for the songwriting, I pretty much created the content, and Billy was the editor, scrubbing the songs down with a coarse, no-bullshit brush when we would jam together. We wrote our own songs, put out small records, and played short sets with a bunch of other bands at local venues that no longer exist. Places like... Um, Fitzgerald's, places like Walter's. Oh, rest in peace, Pam. Those were better days. What we did not do was, like, play cover songs for hours at restaurants and weddings or whatever. The band I'm in now does that stuff, and I dig it, but this band was loud heavy and fast or that or or like really really slow we played some rad shows as a two-piece too like the westheimer street fest in the numbers parking lot where ian was running sound out of the bed of an el camino i mean that was cool our first guitar player bob was a friend of mine from the recording studio he drove an old duster and played a beautiful cream and gold jazz master. Bob would hang out around with his friends bands while they recorded demos and stuff. He had a real cheery, easygoing way about him that I really liked. Very Mitch Hedberg-esque. Oh man, R.I.P. again. Damn. I, oh, no, wait, don't, don't worry, Bob, Bob is still alive. But we did have to part ways for him to some point. I'm getting there. Okay. Bob had like this loose, lazy, dirty, almost improvisational style that I found refreshing. I would more or less stick to my lines, old, old reliable. <laughs> but I liked how Bob's fuzzy, noisy riffs sat low hanging, sat like low hanging clouds over Billy and I holding it down on the ground. After a while, he proved just a tad too far out for this dyad of Billy's, and we had to cut him loose. The band meeting, that band meeting was a drag, let me tell ya. Still, we played some rad shows with Bobbo, like the Westheimer Street Fest and the Mango's little parabolic reflector stage, you know, before Whiskey Wednesdays tore that place a new one. God, man, again, better days, jeez. One of the weirdest shows with Bob was easily my weirdest ever. It was when we opened for a touring Led Zeppelin cover band in the big room at the House of Blues. That may have been our first show with Bob, now that I'm thinking about it. One of these big shot promoter guys in the scene seemed to think that we would fit and threw us a little big time bone. Now... I've been at the music thing for about eight years at that point. 
And this was probably the most legitimate operation I'd ever been a part of. We're talking our own dressing room, stocked with beer, stagehands, and a stage manager with walkie-talkies on a hardwood stage with a giant curtain and line array speakers and wireless microphones and a freight elevator and meal tickets. This was a no joke. And the Zeppelin cover band were all these old dudes in sweatpants with dad bods. And we didn't hang out with them like at all. They were pros. Okay, I guess it was kind of a joke. So, so we set up in front of their gear, which was already sound checked and covered in blankets. I had my usual two amp rig. Bob had a couple of combos way across the stage, and Billy was on his orange kit and on a massive platform in the middle. We're used to being crammed together, but we were so far apart. Even with individual monitor mixes and sound checks, we couldn't hear one another or really feel each other's presence at all. Mind you, if you're playing music with someone, especially if you're making some of it up as you go along, it really helps to be able to hear each other. This is really a story about the importance of good monitor mixes, y'all. Being that it was a clean, accessible venue, I invited my parents who brought their longtime friends, basically my aunt and uncle. They sat up in the balcony, used some meal tickets, and waited for us to play. By showtime, we had drank all the complimentary Budweiser and smogged out the dressing room. The stage manager summoned, we plugged in, and the curtain opened. Y'all, we sucked. This new lineup with Bob did not jive that well to begin with, and the magnifying glass of expensive stage mics, digital mixing boards, and proper acoustics was not kind to us, let me tell you. Worst of all, when we were all done, the stage manager and the audience were actually pleading with us to keep playing, but we simply had no more material. Bob had only been in the band for like a month or two and knew like, four songs granted some of them went on long psychedelic guitar tangents that would normally fill a 30 minute set but we really had milked the jam parts for all they were worth it's like (laughs) these assholes show up with a ton of gear drink all the beer play a short crappy set in front of i don't know 150 people only to refuse to play any more songs, leaving like an hour plus of music before the headliner. It was so bad, y'all. Like, I don't know. I mean, Ted Zeppelin said that we sounded good, but I think he was just being polite. Looking back, the most redeeming quality of the night was Bob, who sent his beloved anniversary jazz master hurling across the stage along with the styrofoam cup of whatever beer he had left from the dressing room fridge and guys he loves that guitar i think he said he just really wanted to leave a dent in the stage so i'll admit billy and i were pretty doggone embarrassed about the whole ordeal but somehow bob's rock tantrum seemed to punctuate the horror show just right i mean we were way out of our element flying by the seat of our pants in a way we felt like we authenticated the spirit of this glorified rock and roll karaoke night by putting ourselves out there regardless of proficiency or preparation or circumstance i've come to really appreciate the sort of truth and character that shines through when people just enjoy creating or performing without perfection being much of a priority at all hell even if it totally sucks i think that house of blues gig helped me develop that appreciation i don't know maybe that just helps me sleep at night anyway after we got all of our shit off stage and shared a good cringy belly laugh about it i went and sat with my parents ordered some southwest egg rolls and waited for Zepp to play Communication Breakdown. Thank you, guys.
You're awesome. Grown up story time forever.